everyone, I'm Diane and welcome to my studio. Today we're going to paint a hen and a cockerel, so let's get started. Here are the models for my painting in my garden here in France. And a simple way of drawing a chicken is to simply do an oval and then a crescent moon underneath. A couple more ovals, one each side for the neck and the tail. And then just pop in a little beak and a comb, just like that, very simple. A pair of legs at the bottom to hold it up. And uh, then just indicate the feathers, smooth things out a little bit, put in the wing, the neck feathers, and pop in an eye. And Bob's your uncle, there we are. Quite simple. And now we'll get started with the painting. First of all, of course, I have to draw my composition. So here I'm just quickly sketching in the hen and then the cockerel. I've just chosen a very simple layout here with the hen and the cockerel facing one another. And I suppose you could probably slow this down if you wanted to follow it more carefully, but I know not everybody wants to watch the drawing. So we'll get straight into the painting right away. Now the colors I'm going to be using for this painting, I will list in the description below. And I always start when I'm doing my chickens and cockerels, I always start with the comb. So just dropping in using um, Old Holland bright red there, the, the comb on the, on the hen. And a little bit of darkness there added using alizarin crimson, just a touch. I didn't use much of that in this painting. And since I've got the red on my brush, I'm going to drop in the comb on the cockerel as well. Chickens all have a certain amount of red around their faces, so we'll indicate that as well in that area there. Just leaving some space there for his eye later. And the part of the wattle which is further away, I'm going to make a little bit darker like I have there. Now I'm dropping in quinacridone gold into the neck feathers of the hen. I'll probably have to reinforce this, I expect, so I'm just going in reasonably lightly, but I'm painting wet on dry. This isn't wet in wet, I haven't wetted the paper here this time. And now I'm adding some, uh, that's uh, burnt sienna, burnt sienna there and a bit of yellow. That's a little bit of um, cobalt blue going in for the further leg and a little bit in the wing area there. And I'm going to uh, drop some blues in for the tail as well. Just keeping it nice and loose, not too much detail, just basically working with colour. And then the legs, always surprises me that the chickens have a sort of creamy pinky kind of colour to their legs. And uh, so we're using Potter's Pink there for that, I think. And now we'll start on the cockerel and I'm dropping in some quinacridone gold using a fairly uh, strong mix, not too much water, but I am painting wet on dry. And I'm trying to preserve some of the texture in the um, paint strokes by using it quite thickly. This particular paint seems to have quite a sticky sort of texture, so it responds to that approach. Not all um, watercolors do, but this old Holland one does seem to do that. And now this blue is Caribbean blue, which is going in a little bit more loosely, a little bit wetter, a bit more water. And now this is burnt sienna for the back of the cockerel. Just brushing that in loosely in this area here. Now just uh, going down the top of his leg here with the Caribbean blue again. And a little bit of um, shevening and 
um, mauve or purple at the back there. You could use Windsor purple. And then his legs, which are going to be on the pink side. Using a bit of artistic license here with the colors. I should have mentioned the brushes I'm using uh, for this painting. I'm just using at the moment um, a round brush, a number 11 and a number five, two round nylon brushes. And in a minute, I'm going to switch to a squirrel mop to do the tail of the bird. The cockerel's tail is always a flamboyant thing to paint and needs a, a bigger brush. So I've mixed up some loose paint here, some uh, this is some Windsor Violet or Scheveningen Mauve and some uh, Thalo Blue or Green. You can pick whatever colours you fancy for the tail, really. It doesn't really matter, but I suggest that uh, you use them using a big brush and use a fairly generous amount of paint. You might feel like you're going to be wasting paint, but you need to be able to put it on fairly liberally, otherwise you don't get the effect of the feathers, really. Now the part I painted a little bit earlier has dried quite a lot, so I'm just going in with a second layer of burnt sienna over the top of the first, and extending that up a little bit into the feathers on the chest, just to make it a little bit stronger. The Paint always dries lighter than it does when it goes on at first. That's inevitable. Watercolors like that. It's not like um, acrylic, which doesn't do that. So you have to allow for the fact that it's going to dry lighter. And your painting, while it's still wet, will look probably to your eye too dark. But don't worry, it will dry back. And I'm touching up the, the hen as well now, going over the, the background with some darker colour. Again, that will dry back and leave a fairly subtle um, coloration at the end. Just a few more feathers there on the tail. And now I'm coming in with a tiny brush, number two round nylon and some black. And I'm just dropping in the eye for both the birds there and indicating the nostrils for the uh, both birds above their beak there and making the cockerel's eye a little bit bigger. And now I'm going to consider the background and I've picked up my squirrel mop again which has uh, got some indigo washed uh, out indigo on it and I'm just putting in a nice blue line at the back. Um, to give them some uh, some background and then I'm going to uh, come in with a little bit of random uh, dot, that dots and dashes here in green that would be indigo mixed with quinacridone gold uh, just dropping some dots there and then a bit of spatter of um, sepia probably or a dark brown of some sort using my toothbrush and now I'm just dropping in some, some yellow dots, which are to represent corn, and just a quite wet paint there, but fairly thick. And then I'm going to come back with some, um, some dark violet and just put the shadows underneath those and touch into the green as well and give some shadow to the green uh, dots, which uh, kind of indicate the things that the chickens are eating. So, so that's that just a little bit of a semi-abstract um, foreground there for the birds to stand on. I'm just adding one or two details to their feet just to bring out the shape a little bit. I like to paint in their toenails with a tiny brush and a little jot of, of black. Not forgetting the spurs. And the final step is just to emphasize the colors in the tail feathers once more where they've died back a little bit so a little bit more violet and a bit more blue. Now the best thing to do at this stage is to let the painting dry and uh, then come back and have a look and see if you feel that it's dried back a lot lighter than you would prefer it and if so then just go in with some more colors the same colors that you used but intensify them by adding them on top of the dry painting 
and you can also paint in some feathery effects at the same time too if you want. So this is the final painting after I'd made the adjustments afterwards. I hope you've enjoyed watching me paint this uh, beautiful handsome cockerel and his friend the hen this afternoon. Hope you have a go, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. And um, I hope to see you back here again soon. If you have enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate it if you could give me a like and subscribe to my channel so that you never miss any future upcoming videos. So thank you very much for being here. Thank you again if you have subscribed and I look forward to being here with you again in the very near future, most likely tomorrow. So bye for now, everybody. Bye bye.